Attica Scott, State Representative, uh, Kentucky House District 41. Well, how I got here is growing up in Beecher Terrace, which is a housing development in Louisville. So living in poverty, living with um, parents who my father was incarcerated, my mother was addicted to alcohol, became addicted to drugs. And so my frame of reference is fighting for people who are most vulnerable, young people, people of color, people who are struggling to make ends meet every single day, because that's what I grew up with. That's what I lived. And so as an elected official, I believe it's my calling to at least fight for the folks who sometimes are not heard by those of us who are in office and sometimes who feel disempowered by those of us who are in office. What I'm hoping we address is common sense uh, gun safety. In Louisville, we had a record number of homicides in 2016, and we're already on track to um, surpass that number in 2017. So people across the city of Louisville are concerned about gun safety, common sense gun safety, uh, also concerned about public education and how do we make sure that public education stays accessible and viable for all of our students across the city, and then also uh, really concerned about women's reproductive health rights and freedom. What I'm hoping we'll do is pass ban the box legislation while the governor did um, pass or sign an executive order for ban the box for state um, applicants. The reality is all of our employers across Kentucky need to ban the box so that people who have served their debt to society have a second chance and an opportunity to feed their families and to take care of themselves. I'm hoping that we will at least have an honest conversation and debate around common sense gun safety and that we will stand up for our public schools, our teachers, our counselors, our administrators, and our students students. It's been very surprising the pace of the process. It's been extremely quick and, and, and quite frankly the first week of session it was ridiculously quick in my opinion. We needed to slow down and really have the honest and healthy debates about issues that the folks across the Commonwealth want us to have so that we can hear different thoughts and opinions around issues. Um, also just the, the fact that there are so many um, folks who want to be heard and haven't yet had the opportunity to be heard. So you know if we can at least slow down and hear from folks I think that that would would make our constituents across Kentucky a lot more um, happy with uh, local and state government. We really represent the entire Commonwealth. Although I'm elected by people in Jefferson County in District 41, I'm advocating for issues that impact all of the folks in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And then, of course, serving with, my goodness, three times as many people as what we served with on Louisville Metro Council. And then the issues. We've got urban and rural and Appalachian and suburban um, versus being in Louisville, which is pretty much an, an urban city. So there are a lot of differences from serving in local government to state government. My name is Alan Al Gentry. Professionally, got out of college, I was a scientist, uh, worked in environmental consulting, uh, donated my arm to a drill rig on a, on a job site in 1993, and uh, that kind of changed my life a little bit. And, uh, I got much more involved with uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, specifically disabled sports. Uh, at the same time, I, I left environmental consulting business and started my own small business in real estate. So I have a very diverse background. Um, but I'd say the last 10 or 15 years anyway, most of my day-to-day -day time has, has been towards disabled sports, and it, it means a lot to me. You know, I've spent the last 20 years of my life trying to get disabled people, now I say disabled, that's not really politically correct, I guess, physically challenged individuals uh, off the couch, being active, and make sure that they know that their life is not, is not over, it's just change, and it's an opportunity to be special, to do something on a daily basis that most people don't think you can do. And that's an incredible opportunity, because not only can you really save and change your life on the positive, but you change the lives of everybody that comes in contact with you because you inspire them in what you do. When I lost my arm, it changed my life in a lot of different ways. And I think I became more engaged with the government process, um, not intentionally, just, uh, and you know, we live, we live in a society where capitalism rules, and, and I'm convinced that that is the best form of government, but, unchecked, um, I think people with less power and less money can be trampled on and I think everybody needs a voice in this, in this government and uh, as, as a person with a disability I'm kind of a member of a minority group. Minority groups can, can be taken advantage of and I hope to be a strong voice for those groups. In my district um, most of the neighborhoods were built around 
General Electric Appliance Park uh, several decades ago. So uh, working families is, is, is my thing. I'm very, uh, very much pro-labor and um, I'll probably be working to, I mean, the key to that's jobs. Uh, we have to increase our, our workforce development and, and skilled labor and, and I hope to work with the governor and, and um, people on the other side of the aisle to, to help do that and hopefully rebuild some apprenticeship programs. I've always felt like government was set up so that legislation moved in a somewhat methodic process or, or order so that there was quite a bit of debate on an issue and, and nice strong bipartisan uh, uh, laws are created, but what my experience the first week was nothing like that. It, and um, you know, the Republican Party is is in supermajority status right now, and I'm just afraid that if the people want to change, I'm not sure they wanted reckless change. And if we move too quickly, we might get some things passed that it's not really what we wanted to do. So I, I, I urge caution. And I think it's important that not only uh, that the opposition has an opportunity to voice their opinions because we can always learn from each other.